Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. In the last couple of episodes, we added the capability to the editor to compile shaders, create material assets and pair the material with textures if any in order to use it for rendering an object. Now in order to actually create a material in the game engine, we have to first initialize the engine and then send the information over for the resources that are going to be created. I will start by renaming this class because it's a material input that's used specifically with applied materials, so it makes more sense to name it accordingly. Also for trivial constructors like this, I'm going to use primary constructors which have existed for a few years now, but somehow I was completely oblivious to their existence till a few days ago. This should be a property, otherwise we can't bind to it in a WPF control. This can be written more compactly. Get metadata for applied materials should return material metadata. Here is an assertion for checking that this path exists, but of course this is not a real file path yet. So either we need to evaluate the primal engine macro or remove the assertion. I'll do the latter for the sake of time. Ok, now we are ready to implement interface functions for engine initialization and shutdown, as well as functions for creating and destroying resources. We start with create resource first, since it's fairly simple. It's just a call to create resource function in the content namespace. Similarly, destroy resource is a call to the corresponding content function. Now we can go ahead and write the c -sharp code that copies the data. However, I see that I used id type for the return type of create render surface. Although this is fine since both are 32-bit integers, id type might change in the future while this function would still return an int. So I'll revert that change here. Create resource method in C -sharp is just a copy of data to a buffer that can be accessed by the engine, followed by a call to the C++ function. Now if we follow the trail of function calls into the heart of the engine where the actual resources are created, we can see that we get to a place that can only run successfully when at least the graphics module has been initialized. For example, in case of adding meshes, we need an initialized D3D12 device in order to create a committed resource for the vertex and index buffers, among others. So the next step is to initialize the engine. This is in and of itself not complicated. We just need to repeat what we are already doing in the test project in order to initialize the renderer. So looking in test initialize function, we see that we only need a few lines of code for compiling the built-in shaders and initializing the graphics module. This would be enough to get it working, but I'd like to add a few error codes that we can pass to the editor so that it can let the user know what went wrong during initialization. and shutting down the engine is rather trivial. Later I'll add more checks for making sure that all resources have been freed before this point. We can copy these error codes and add enum descriptions that can be used in error messages. Next, we simply import the new functions. If you have a renderer that supports other graphics APIs like Vulkan, 
You can use a parameter in Initialize Engine in order to select the API you would like to use. Okay, so this would return an error code and we are ready to call it. The engine initialization happens before we load the project and that's right before we open the project browser dialog. Here, if the initialization was successful, then we open the project browser. Otherwise, we let the user know by showing them a message box. Of course, we also have to shut down the engine when we exit the application. Now there are a few ways we can exit the application. We can do so by closing the main window or by closing the project browser. In both cases, we have to call the engine shutdown function. So I'm going to put this in its own method and reuse it. This should be a void function, obviously. And now we are ready to test if we can start up the engine for use with the editor. I put a breakpoint here so we can see if the API functions are called as we expect. Pressing F11 steps into the function and now we are in the C++ side. Shader compilation was successful and we can try initializing the graphics module next. So we got in the initialize function of the low-level renderer, which uses DirectX 12 API. Let's see if we can get to the end of this function without problems. Unfortunately, it seems that we do have a problem when creating one of the root signatures, and the error is telling us that we are trying to set a flag that's not supported. Let's have a look at root signature flags. Well, the only one that we added recently was this one in order to enable direct descriptor heap indexing in the shader. Let's see what happens if we don't set this flag. Okay, now we get an error saying that the shader model 6.6 .6 is not supported. This is a shader model that was used for compiling the built-in shaders. From these errors, we can conclude that we are using the wrong version of DirectX DLLs. In our test application, we tell the runtime to use the DLLs that are provided by the Agility SDK. Initializing the engine from within the editor, however, doesn't seem to manage this successfully. I'll put back this flag before we continue. Okay, so, looking at this code, we see that we are exporting these symbols to signal the application loader that we want to use DLLs from the Agility SDK. However, this only works if we export these from the main process of the application. In case of the editor, we are loading the engine as a DLL, so right off the bat, this fails to work. We could try and export these from the editor, but first of all, there is no trivial way to export symbols from a C-sharp application, and second of all, if we did somehow manage to do so, the actual application is still loaded from a DLL by a native host program as we see here, and therefore it still wouldn't work. The only way that we could export these symbols from the main process of the application would be by replacing this native host launcher with our own and that's what I'm going to show you in the next video. Thank you as always for joining me and I'll see you next time.